Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Fortinet. Now, here are your hosts, Lisa Martin and Peter Burris. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin, joined by Peter Burris. We have been in Vegas all day at Accelerate 2017. What an exciting, buzz-filled uh, day that we've had, Peter. I feel like we've learned, I've learned a lot myself, but also just the, the passion and the opportunity for helping companies become more secure as security is evolving is really palpable. Well, yeah, I totally agree with you, Lisa. In fact, uh, if there's one kind of overarching theme of what we heard and what we experienced, it's this is one of the first conferences, security conferences that I've been to where we spent more time talking about business opportunity, business outcome, the role that security is going to play in facilitating business change, and we spent a lot less time talking about security speeds, security feeds, geeking out about underlying security technologies. And I think that portends a pretty significant seismic shift in how people regard security. We'll still always have to be very focused and understand those underlying technologies and the speeds and feeds, but increasingly the business conversation is creeping into and in fact starting to dominate how we regard security. It has to become viewed in a digital world, it has to become viewed as a strategic business asset and not just as the thing you do to make sure your devices don't get stolen or appropriated. Right, and that, that context was set from the beginning with the keynotes this morning. The CEO, Ken Z, a lot of folks that we talked to today said he normally gets quite technical in keynotes and today kept things really at a business level. And we heard that many people thought it was the best keynote they've seen him give in That's a long right. time. That's a great point. And one of his key messages was that at the end of the day, digital business is not about some new observations on channels or new observations on products. It really is about how you use data to differentiate, differentially create and sustain customers. My words, not his, but right. it's very, very much in line. The difference between any business and digital business is how you use your data. Right. And we heard that over and over and over today and how security technologies and practices and capabilities have to evolve to focus more on what businesses want to do with data. And that is where certainly Fortinet sees the market going and they're trying to steer their customers so that they can take advantage of those opportunities. Right, and, and that's a great point that you made. Their CFO, who we had on the program as well, uh, Drew Diamato, talked about in his keynote that it's critical for a company to be able to have digital trust. We talk, talk about trust in lots of different contexts, but what does trust mean to a business? Well, and, and he was, and as you said, he's the CFO. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's interesting to, you know, CFOs typically focus on things like how are, are the, are we, is the ownership getting a return on the capital that they've invested in this company? Um, and it was very, to me anyway, refreshing to hear a CFO expressly state data is becoming an increasing feature of the capital stock of the company. Right, right. And we have to take explicit steps to start to protect it and secure it because in fact, it's through security that data is turned into an asset. If, if, if you don't secure your data, it's everywhere because it's easily copied, it flies around. Data and security are, in, at least data asset, the concept of data asset and security are inextricably bound because it is through security that you create the asset notion of data, the thing that generates value. Right. Because if you don't, it's everywhere. It's easy to copy. And it was, uh, I thought he did a wonderful job of starting to tie together the idea of data in business in a very straightforward, tactical CFO approach. And uh, it was a good conversation about where business people are starting to think about how this is going to evolve. Right, he also talked about the role of the CISO and there was a panel on during the general session of three CISOs from different industries. That's an interesting evolution as security has evolved from perimeter to only to uh, web to cloud to now where we need to be as, as Kenzie talked about, we're at this third generation, right? It's about 
fabric. You talked about that and the importance of that and the capabilities. But it's also interesting to hear security is now a conversation in the boardroom. This is not something that is simply owned by a CIO or a CISO, that that role has to facilitate kind of this, a company becoming a digital army in order to create value from that data. And a lot of folks said today too, that, that's that um, mindset of, if I can't see it, I can't protect it. Yeah, we heard that from, uh, we heard that this morning from, as you said, the CFO. We also heard from George, uh, from the, uh, the CSO of Azure, yes. of Microsoft Azure. Yes. Uh, we heard this, we heard the relationship, the evolving role of the, of the CISO or the chief security officer multiple times today. Uh, look, security's hard. Uh, let, let's, you know, this is, this is not easy stuff. Uh, we can bring a lot of automation and we can bring a lot of technology to bear on making it easier and simplifying it and we heard a lot about how that's happening. But this is a hard, hard thing to do for a lot of reasons, but it's one that must be done, especially in a digital world. And the role or the impact on the CISO role is profound. Because you're not going to have everybody in the organization be, uh, have, have a, a they all have a stake in it, but they're all not going to perform security routines necessarily. Yet it's too big, as we heard from George, for one person. And so we have to start increasingly thinking about security as a strategic business capability that may be championed by the CISO, but is going to be uh, uh, is going to be undertaking in a lot of different places. And one of the things that the, the Microsoft gentleman, uh, uh, George, uh, George Moore, George Moore uh, bought up, was the idea that increasingly, if you do security right, you can secure things at a relatively technical level and present them as services so that other parts of the business can start to consume them and they become part of their security architecture. Yes. And it goes into their products or it goes into their services or it goes into how they engage customers. Scale. Or whatever else it might be, logistics. Yeah. And I think that that is a very powerful way of thinking about how security is going to work through a fabric being able to present a hierarchy of security capabilities that go all the way out to your customers and actually allow you to engage your customers at a security conversation level, which is, we, we also heard that talked about a little bit today, the role that, you know, the brand value of trust. Absolutely. But we yes. still don't have an answer for how that's going to play out. Right. So as we look at some of the other things that were talked about in Ken's keynote, hyper-connectivity. So from the proliferation of mobile and IoT, which IoT devices, there's what, 20 billion that are predicted to be connected by 2020, which is just a few years away. Um, as that sounds, well, it doesn't sound, it is increasing the threat surface. And we, we are also hearing from some of the folks that were on the program today, Derek Mankey being one of them, who uh, wrote a great blog just published recently on Fortinet talking about the major trends that are being seen and the challenges there. I think we're also seeing that companies like Fortinet and their, tech, their suite of of technology alliance partners like Microsoft, like Nozomi, going all the way out to the endpoints and back that these companies are coming together to collaborate to start mitigating the risks that are increasingly there with the threat surface being larger. I think there was a lot more positivity than I honestly anticipated um, when you hear of all these attacks that it's daily and that's such a common thing. The collaboration of, of the technology and the integration is, um, is exciting to hear where these companies are going to be able to limit damage. Well, so, yeah, and, and to put a, one more number on it, uh, we, you know, the 20, 20 billion devices, but it's what those devices are doing. So again, George, uh, George Moore from, from Microsoft Azure talked about, I think he said it was 800 billion events that they're dealing with a day, and in 2017, Microsoft Azure is going to cross the threshold of dealing with, a with one trillion events a day that they have to worry about from a, from a security standpoint. And that if you think about that industry-wide, Microsoft Azure's big, but there are others. You know, we're talking today probably somewhere, I just estimated, he said, yeah, that sounds about right, about five trillion, five trillion events a day that businesses have to worry about in aggregate from a security standpoint. And that number is just going to keep growing exponentially. I mean, he, you know, in a year's time, he talked about three, four, five X. So we're talking about hundreds of trillions of events. Uh, Staggering numbers. Within the next decade or so. Uh, and the, there is virtually no way <laughs> that human beings are set up 
to deal with those kinds of numbers. Right. It's going to require great technology. Automation. That provides great automation. Yes. That nonetheless works with humans. So, uh, so that the so that the, the the discretion that human beings bring, the the smarts and the collaboration that human beings bring to bear, and the value that they create stays there. Right. So we're going to see more productivity being uh, coming out of these incredibly smart people that are doing security because the tooling is going to improve and make it possible. And if it doesn't happen, then that's going to put a significant, you know, break on how fast a lot of this digital business evolution takes place. Right, from uh, another point that, that was quite um, prevalent a lot among our conversations today was that there isn't, with the exception maybe of healthcare, it's quite an agnostic problem that, that enterprises are facing in terms of th security threats. When we talked to Derek, he mentioned healthcare being one because that information is so pervasive, it's very personal and private, but something that kind of surprised me, I, I almost thought we might see or hear about a hierarchy, maybe healthcare, financial services, but really what everyone talked about today was that the security threats are really pervasive across all industries, all the way even to industrial control systems and HVAC systems, which shows you the breadth of the challenge ahead, but to your point and some of the uh, points that some of our guests made, it's going to be a combination of the humans and the machines coming together to combat these challenges. Well, I think what we're seeing is that, uh, is that the, there's a high degree of data specialization within a lot of industries based on different terms, different tactics, different uh, risk profiles, et cetera, but that many of the algorithms necessary to uh, understand exceptions or deal with anomalies or one of those other things are applicable across a lot of different industries. Uh, so what we are likely to see over the next few years is we're still likely to see some of that specialization by industry, by data, uh, nonetheless become featured in the output, but, we're, uh, but the algorithms are going to be commonly applied. Now, and they'll get better and better and better. Right. So uh, it, there, there's still likely to be some degree of specialization if only because the data itself is somewhat specialized. But that, but the other thing that we heard is that it's pretty clear that the bad guys want to get access, well, let's put it this way, not all data is of equal value. Right, absolutely. And the bad guys want to get access to the data that is especially valuable absolutely. to them. And a lot of that data is in healthcare systems. Right. And so, the uh, to bring these common algorithms, that specialized data, to secure the especially challenging problems associated with healthcare is a real, real big issue for a lot of businesses today. Not just healthcare businesses, but people who are you know, buying insurance for their employees and et cetera. Yeah, exactly, so it becomes a pervasive problem. Um, we, you were mentioning today that this was very much a business conversation versus speeds and fees. We did hear about a couple of technologies moving forward that are going to be key to driving um, security and forward, analytics, data science, in fact. Uh, and we also talked about kind of the difference between security fabric, which uh, uh, Fortinet rolled out last year, and a platform, and how a business needs to kind of mobilize around that, the differences there control versus uh, spreading that out. But one of the things that Fortinet did about, I think it was in June of last year, was they acquired ExcelOps. So bringing in monitoring, bringing in real-time analytics. And a lot of our guests talked about the essentialness of that real-time capability to discover, detect, remediate, and, uh, and, and clear things up. So that was from a 2017 perspective, besides analytics and data science, what are some of the other things that you see here as essential technologies to facilitate um, where the security uh, evolution trajectory is going. Well, I, I think in many respects it comes back to some of the, some of the uh, uh, things we just talked about. Um, that as digital business increasingly, I mean, well, let's step back. The way we define at Wikibon Silicon Angle what digital business is, a, what differentiates a digital business from any other kind of business is data. It's how you use your data to create and sustain customers. Um, now. That's a pretty big world. There's a lot of, you know, most of us operate in the analog world. Uh, and there's some very interesting ways of turning that analog information into digital information. Uh, there's, there's voice, there's photographs, there's a lot of other different, we talked a little bit about industrial internet of things. Right. There's an enormous set of investments being made today to turn that analog world that all of us operate in and the processes that we normally think about 
into digital representations that then can be turned into models for action, models for insight, new software systems that can then have an impact on how the business actually operates. And I think that if we think, you know, that the, the notion of analytics and data science, and by the way, security is one of those places where that set of disciplines have really, really matured uh, through fraud detection and other types of things. But I think what we're going to look at is as new types of data are created by different classes of business or different classes of industry or different roles and responsibilities, that that data too will have to be made secure. Uh, and, that, and, and so what we're going to see is as the world figures out new ways of using data to create new types of value, that the security industry is going to have to be moving in lockstep so that security doesn't once again become uh, the function that says no to everything, right. but rather the function that says, yeah, we can do that. We right. can go from idea to execution really fast because we know how to make that data secure. Exactly, well Peter, it's been such a pleasure and Same. honor co-hosting with you today. Thank you so much for sharing the desk with me. Absolutely, Lisa. Look forward to doing it some other time. And we want to thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE today as well. I want to uh, also point you to some of the upcoming events. Go to siliconangle.tv. Just uh, uh, next week we've got the VTUG Winter Warmer going on. You'll also be able to see that on the website. Women in Data Science with yours truly in early February. And then the Spark Summit in February at seven through nine in Boston. Again, that's siliconangle.tv. For my co-host Peter Burris, I'm Lisa Martin. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.